I do, what my company does can be summarized as three different things. We own and operate a few businesses. Uh, we like to start new businesses. So we're entrepreneurs. We like to incubate new business ideas. And then thirdly, we like to empower other entrepreneurs. We've been investing in entrepreneurs for a long time. Test and experiment a new way of building and operating businesses. If we did not have that, let's call it a just cause, the whole thing would have been kind of meaningless because that is really what drives us. The idea of investing in other entrepreneurs is really interesting to us because we feel like if there's a framework that goes beyond the model that majority of corporations globally have followed in the last so many decades and a model that is inspired by the spiritual teachings of the Baha'i faith. Just thinking about the unity of humanity, thinking about the spiritual aspect of who we are. If you're able to build an economic model, how we build and grow businesses, uh, taking into account those teachings, we feel that uh, we've succeeded. Now we, we make a ton of mistakes, but at least that is our goal. That That's a journey we'd like to be part of. Collectively, when you think about the values that are love around unity. So let's just take these two words. So love, unity, maybe truthfulness. You make them part of the, the fabric of who you are. Then think about employees, vendors, customers, who would they want to work with you? Who would them feel that this actually empowers uh, the relationship? Our experience has been that A, the founders don't really fight it, that they're interested in it. But frankly, before that happens, we think about who are the founders we want to actually work with. You know, in Silicon Valley, if you think about the VCs that fund companies in general, typically they find a good idea. If they like it, they fund it. Now they say that the team matters, but what they mean by the team matters is really that are they capable of building the business? To me, team matters, the founders matter, but are they in line with our values and the culture we want to build? Would I hire this individual as a member of my management team? Because just them saying that, yes, they are interested in those values, that's not good enough. Do they really feel it in their heart? Is it something they really want to uh, implement? You know, it's, it's based on the time you spend with them, based on the interviews. I mean, of course, the idea has to be a good idea to begin with. And if it has legs, it has potentials to become a real business, great. Is this a business idea that is in line with our values? For example, if the next vape company wants to raise money, I don't care how good the people are, we're not gonna invest in that. Uh, it's not good for humanity. But let's say, check mark, check mark, good business. Then it's, it's about the time that we spend with the founders. And I, I'm really proud to saying that we do say no to people just because of the fact that we feel that they are not a good fit. Recently, we had we had an opportunity that was a tough one to say no to. But on top of our investment, because the idea was something that we have a lot of core competencies in that segment of the market, they were willing to give us significant ownership uh, just because they wanted us involved as an advisor on top of our investment. We thought about it and we said, no, we're going to pass, even though it was it was a sure opportunity. We said no because we felt that the alignment wasn't there. You want to think about empowering an entrepreneur to potentially become financially powerful. Will that result in the world being a better place or not? Uh, so through our operations, we have tried to make it very clear that uh, diversity, uh, equity, inclusion is a core part of who we are. It is not a department. And in fact, I've been so adamant about the idea that that, that has to be part of everything that you do. It cannot be a department of its own. It's the way you hire. It's uh, the way you recruit to begin with. So the candidates you get, the way you promote, the way you make sure how people are getting paid, the way you provide opportunities within the corporation and so on. And at the end of the day, uh, the outcome is really what matters. Because I'm proud of the fact that 60% of our employees are women. And people say, well, shouldn't it be 50-50? I'm like, well, sometimes a pendulum has to go a little bit to the other side before it lands in the middle. Uh, but 50% of our executives are women. Uh, there, there's equity in pay, uh, regardless of your gender. And we, we measure that. We have, of course, profit sharing in place for everybody. 
and also when it comes to racial uh, diversity, we do our best. We're not we're not exactly where I want us to be, and uh, but we are trying very hard to be on the right path. And it's just exciting to see that some of that has been recognized by by outside firms. And frankly, we never went after winning any awards until Steve Sarowitz. He advised me. He said, you know. Given everything you guys do, it would be good to have some outsiders to say that, yeah, you know, we actually did an independent study, and in fact, they deserve this award, uh, because then that that becomes uh, that that will help something that others want to learn about. And so after he told me that, uh, we you know we applied for some of these awards, and we've been winning them. So we own an agency called Quite Remarkable, and our agency redesigned the logo. And the agency really thinks deeply about spiritual implications of branding. Also, the the blue dot is, of course, uh, the planet, and that's really important. And then one is the oneness of humanity, uh, one uh, that connects uh, one and the planet, humanity and the planet. That they have to be at peace. Coherence has to be there in order for both doing well and prospering. Well, it's interesting. You're aware that we recently launched uh, One Planet VC. Uh, one of the potential investors in One Planet VC asked me, "Why do you guys care so much about uh, this thing about spirituality, about like you know running businesses differently, and why not just focus on building a good business and selling it and making money, and then go take your money and give it to charity if you want to?" I said, "Well." The world does not need one more VC. There are plenty of VCs with more money, with more assets, with more expertise than we have. But the world does need a new way of looking at the economic life of the planet. And we want to live a coherent life. We don't want to leave、uh, th- that life of service to the evenings and the weekends. We want to be part of everything we do and what we do on an ongoing basis. So that is, I think, really what has changed about me. Because if you go back to my first business, which I founded with my brother, I was young. I was 27 when that company went public, and we had raised money from different VCs and so on. And we did not have enough control over the future of that business. So I left that company because I felt that the way that business was being built was no longer aligned with what was important to me. I guess the epiphany I had was in 2014 that why can't for profits be behind inspired? Why can't for profits be inspired by the teachings, spiritual teachings? Why should it be just limited to nonprofits? So that was my epiphany. That I'm like, okay, well, from now on, we'll build the business very differently. Since then,、uh, the profits of the company have grown 800 percent, more than 800 percent.、Uh, the the revenues have have grown, I think, about 400 percent. Uh, the, the the average tenure of our employees, while in Silicon Valley, is 2.1 years. Ours is 10 plus years. Our clients almost never leave us. They they, they say, it, it just turned out that、uh, it is good business. So today, I feel like living that coherent life has made me a better entrepreneur. It was about the same time. It was 2014, 15 when I came to the first conference that you had, and I believe it was in Milan, which was a wonderful event. And and I got a chance to spend more time with Julian, meeting people that they are aligned in their way of thinking, can really cause people to lift each other up because they're they're dealing, and there's so few people who are willing to incorporate spirituality in their businesses. So it's amazing to get to know them. Meeting Julian has been, for example, phenomenal for our business because we learn so much about the way、uh, Julian im- implements culture and ensures that that culture is documented, and that documented culture、uh, is perpetuated to all of his locations, and、um, and the strength that comes out of that you can see in you know the ratings、uh, that you see online for his、uh, hotels and just how well that that business has. Uh, has done and, and how well it's been operated. He was so generous that he allowed、uh, a few of our employees to go and get trained by their head of culture, and then they came back and, and we took those learnings. We documented our own culture. 
then his head of culture came and trained our employees and it was just absolutely phenomenal uh to have uh, to have that opportunity to learn from each other and as a result come up with something better so i feel like the people and also the conversations out of these events have been really a huge source of inspiration i would say the biggest challenge is that you know and you feel that you are you are going to get judged by your staff by the outside world based on the fact that you have these lofty ideals uh, but then when you come short of them puts more of a spotlight on your failures and we're complete cognizant of that i'm totally okay with it we've had class action lawsuits as an organization it is it is what it is you know you run a business and you try to have uh, implement the best ideals but it doesn't change the fact that you're part of the broader world uh, you have to operate in that world but then how do we what do we do with them when those challenges arise what do we do uh, with consultation so people don't feel disenfranchised when you raise the value of consultation but then i as the leader of the business make a decision that was not necessarily uh, in conformity with the democratic view of the people i consulted with and there, there are lots and lots of issues that that they come up the way i see it is that it is okay and and we're learning and uh, people know that i'm going to paraphrase it horribly there's some people who memorize everything and they're so good at it i'm not but bahola quotes i think the the persian poet sadi and he says uh, he basically talks about the uh, the about the bahais he says that even orad you come out a winner uh you know you know shine so funny i was talking to shaheen once and i was going into a business meeting and we were thinking about acquiring a company and i said a bahai prayer to abul ahmad and i went to that meeting and i told shaheen and shaheen so well, what do you want to happen do you want this deal to happen i said well, i i think i want it to happen but i feel like even orad or a winner doesn't matter i'm completely detached i'm going to walk into that meeting they want to do it great they don't want to do it i'm as happy it's it's okay uh, as long as you know that whatever happens happens you know if you are happy with the journey you're enjoying the journey you, it uplifts you and it allows you to live a coherent life i'm extremely worried about uh the way that businesses are built and operated in in the world right now i think it's extremely dangerous i think that's one of the biggest ticking bombs and that, that the world is facing and they don't realize it the the global uh corporations that they're more powerful than countries this is dangerous it is very dangerous and it it is sucking innovation out of the market it is really affecting people's ability to have a small business and 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 be able to uh prosper i like to think and then we know this is not going to happen by force the same way that you cannot by force uh you know make sure people don't be racist you cannot force people uh to give to the poor you cannot force doing those things and uh I don't really like to see that there's going to be a law that will prevent companies from getting large but there's got to be a spiritual transformation at some point that a corporation that's already worth a trillion dollars is going to say that you know what I'm going to pay my warehouse workers enough why not what do I have to lose I'm already worth 100 billion dollars or more and my company is worth a trillion dollars or more what do I have to give up by paying my warehouse workers enough why wouldn't I give uh, do sacrificial giving when it comes to charitable giving why would i you know say that you know what i'm not going to go into this segment of the business because it can create a lot of pain for small business owners in the country i just won't do it i can but i won't because it's not good for the country and for the world when is that going to happen i mean i i just hope that there's going to be a a point in time that people will wake up and there will be that spiritual transformation